This is the Truth Network. Hidden treasures of the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Oh, how the church's beauty reflects <laughs> Jesus in so many different ways and just reflects a woman's beauty in so many different ways. And boy, am I seeing now all these dots will connect for us today in verse 3 of the Dalit section or the fourth chapter of the Song of Songs. And so just, wow, 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 is all I have to say. I'll just read it in English and we'll dive in because there's a lot of dots I think you'll connect when we read this verse. So we've been talking as, as we talked about the, the different seven attributes of the bride, of the beauty of the bride, and how they reflect Christ's sevenfold anointing from Isaiah chapter 11. And so we'll read this in English. Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet and thy speech is comely. Thy temples are like a piece of a pomegranate within thy locks. So here we have two things. I think anybody who would look at a beautiful woman, they see ruby red lips, right? Or however that looks, red lips and blushed cheeks. And so it's interesting that both colors have to do with red. I think that's fascinating. And so if we connect these with the, with the seven, since we did the wisdom and understanding counsel today, the lips would be might. And then the temples, or in this case, it's actually cheeks, would probably be a better description of what's described here. The cheeks are the pomegranates, um, are knowledge, which is just beautifully lines up with that in so many different mysterious ways. So, you know, the scarlet, thread is throughout the scriptures, as you may know. And, you know, the first time we see it, I believe, is in Genesis when the scarlet thread is wrapped around the um, heel of uh, Perez's brother, Zerah. And then we see it throughout, of course, the Levitical law as a way to cleanse leprosy. And then we see it again as Rahab would drop a scarlet cord down her, <laughs> you know, um, out of her window in order to keep the promise. And so <clears throat> Rashi makes that connection, which I think is beautiful, that the red, the red, um, the scarlet cord is often connected to the promise. In other words, the promise that Zerah would be the firstborn because that's why they put it on his, his, his ankle. And the promise that Rahab would be um, taken care of because she'd protected the spies and the promise of being cured from leprosy as as from the Levitical law. And so this idea of the promise is is connected to that scarlet, and again, these scarlet lips. And since this is the idea of might or power, when you think of the power of your words, it's absolutely spectacular. And so we can see that connection. And then, you know, the, the idea of the scarlet is huge, and it connects so many different dots because there is a worm that is called the scarlet worm, which is in so many ways an image of Chris, Christmas because of that scarlet promise. <laughs> and the way that the, the scarlet worm works, I've talked about this in my radio show several times, is that there's a female scarlet worm that they use to get this dye, that they would dye the threads in order to get this beautiful color that was used in the, much of the tapestry, in the, in the veil and all in the temple which again is, is more of the promise <laughs> that that veil would be torn in two. But the way that the scarlet uh, happens with the case of the worm is this particular bug, the female of the, of the species, will cling to an oak tree, wood. You know, as we've talked about so many times, how wood is a picture of righteousness, and scarlet is an idea of righteousness as well. And so they, they hold to this wood, and then they die, and as they die, they lay their eggs, and those eggs then begin to feed on the body of their mother, and when it does, when they do, it releases this scarlet dye that both marks the tree as scarlet and also marks their young, and that they now have the same scarlet, and of course they use that color in order to make the thread red. And so as we... Um, clearly eat Christ through communion and, and we're receiving the promise, you know, to be part of him through 
you know, taking communion. And all of that is pictured by this scarlet thread that weaves its way all the way through scriptures in so many different ways. And so I hope you can see the, 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 the might of that, the might of that scarlet thread and the might of these words that would speak a word of hope to people. Okay, and so you can see that, and of course there's a lot of ways you can go with that, but we'll move on to the pomegranates, and I don't know if you've ever heard this, but a lot of folks believe that the fruit that that Adam and Eve ate was pomegranate, Um, you know, again, the idea of being a red fruit, and (laughs) the reason they think that is that the pomegranate has long been associated with knowledge. They're Uh, The Jews have taught that there are 613 seeds in a pomegranate, which has a lot to do with, you know, the whole idea of being fruitful, (laughs) of course, obviously, but also the idea of there are 613 mitzvah, according to their traditions. Again, this is something to just know. I don't know that it's anything that is absolute truth, but we do know is obviously there's a lot of seeds in a pomegranate. And the idea of all that is there's much to know. And so, (laughs) you know, the idea of these cheeks being blushed is from Matthew Henry pointed this out beautifully, that is our own knowledge of our sin behind these locks. In other words, it's not obvious to anybody but Jesus that behind our locks, we blush over our sin. And that to Jesus is beautiful. In other words, as we consider those things that that we have we have missed the mark on, it's 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 embarrassing. And and of course, you know, Jesus knows how we actually feel and how our hearts respond to that. And his, um, you know, he can see that behind our locks, and it's absolutely beautiful. And so, as we look at this verse, you know, there's just a whole whole lot to think about. You know, how can we actually look to apply this or what does this look like with these scarlet lips and these blushing cheeks from Jesus's point of view? And I I think perhaps, um, you know, we have opportunities all the time. Like I, I got a call late Saturday night from a dear friend who was struggling and going through just some difficult letdowns and and what she told me was she actually felt like a loser as a result of some of the things that had happened and and I know this person is anything but a loser <laughs> and so you know it was it was wonderful to share with her as I as we thought about the promises right and, and to help um, I guess you know her to see you know how much God is doing with her life and how much, you know, she's an encouragement to so many other people. And even though all I was doing just was reflecting what God had given me, I know in that situation to her, you know, my lips were scarlet. It has to absolutely were that they were revealing this promise that we know that, you know, what we've done for Christ will last, you know, (laughs) I mean, that's just, that's, that's a big, big part of it. But we also talked at length you know, about th- this idea that we, we we shared in the third chapter about, you know, behold, or you daughters of Zion go forth and see the crown of thorns that we crowned Jesus with ourselves, that we're, we're responsible for, you know, him having to shed this crimson. And, and but yet it was in, somehow in his, his delight. And I think of the times that I let him down or the times that I didn't have those scarlet lips for somebody that needed them, and it, and it makes me blush, and I'm sure that it makes you blush as well, that, that, that you know, we want to be there for people that need the encouragement, um, but it's a beautiful thing to see that here we are um, as the bride of Christ, and he sees these scarlet lips and these blushed cheeks, um, just spectacular stuff to think about today and, and, and reflect Uh, What an opportunity it is to share this with you all. I really, really, really appreciate it. 